Welcome back to ECMID TV. We're joined now in our studio by a couple of people who've been deeply involved in ECMID this year. They both travelled in to the Congress from London, and let's meet them and find out what it is that they've been up to. First of all, let's welcome John Otter, and later we'll talk to Heather Loveday about what's been going on. But John, welcome to the set, first of all. Why are you here? What's been going on for you? Good morning, Michael. Thank you. So I work at a hospital group in London uh, in charge of trying to interrupt the transmission of key hospital pathogens. Um, specifically in relation to this conference, CPE, which is an emerging threat that combines the potential of rapid spread, high levels of antibody resistance, and invasive infections that can be fatal. So it's a big challenge, and, and it's a new challenge for us. And we're really, we've got L plates on in trying to learn how to prevent the transmission of this bug. Uh, we've been managing a, a large outbreak, and some of the work we've been doing has uh, helped to understand better ways to screen patients in order to identify those patients to focus our infection prevention and control measures on. The other thing I'm interested in is social media and different ways of, if you like, selling our ideas to the public and to our colleagues. In a sense, we are all like salespeople. Our data is our yeah. product and our clients are the patients and our colleagues. So apart from the outbreak story that you've been looking at and discussing here at ECMID, from a social media point of view, what have you learned about this Congress or what have you seen or observed? Well, I've learned, I'm interested in that as well. Yeah, I've learned that it's possible to get a scientific Congress to trend on Twitter, which is a big success. The hashtag's been going crazy. Yeah. Uh, and it's a new way of learning and it takes a little bit of adaptation. Uh, but my mantra is that it should be fairly time neutral. I don't think it should take over your life. It's not the most important channel but I do think it's one we need to embrace, and it's good to see lots of people embracing it here. Stunning, and as well as the fact we've got ECMA TV running on its own YouTube channel as well. Great. I think it's all quite useful and moving in the right direction. Yeah. Excellent. Heather, turning to yourself, uh, also from the UK, you're representing an organization here as well. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm Heather Loveday. I'm a um, professor of evidence-based healthcare at the University of West London, but I'm also the president of the Infection Prevention Society, which is the UK's um, professional organization for people working in infection prevention in our healthcare settings. Um, I'm here really just to um, help drive some of the European messages and learning um, around infection prevention into practice that we can use in the UK. Um, been looking particularly at the infection control stream, mm -hmm. um, which has been really interesting in, in parts. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more of that next year. If I come back to um, Vienna, that would be really good because I think some of the messages are great. And there's also quite a lot of questions around some of the practices that we're, we're beginning to take for granted, such as the... Uh, session this morning that Didier Pate and uh, Susan Huang did around chlorhexidine bathing which is ubiquitous um, in intensive care settings but there are clear things we need to think about in using that approach um, so I found it really really useful um, I'm also very interested in social media mm. we have a very active social media um, community within the infection prevention society and I think we've been one of those sort of helping trend um, ECMID. So, I'd agree um, with that. I that. guess as a society and its members have really embraced social media and they're leading the way in some ways in that regard. Oh, that's terrific. And it has been a major part of the Congress here as well. What's been your biggest takeaway, Heather, in terms of attending this year's ECMID event in Amsterdam? Um, I think that science is important, but translating that science into practice is absolutely essential. Um, I mean, I've just come from the um, biofilm session, which was, I thought that's going to be really sciencey, but in fact, the, the science was really important in terms of what do we need to do to ensure we know what infections our, our patients have mm. and how do we go about ensuring that if they're embedded in biofilms, we're able to uh, identify them. Um, also, part of what we do here is look for speakers that we might be able to use within our own conferences ah, to, right. to sort of drive interest in the you know things that maybe people don't get the opportunity to attend themselves. So, I mean, very few nurses get the opportunity to attend conferences like this. So part of our role is to actually make sure that we're able to bring some of that science to our own conference in mm. September in Harrogate. Well, there certainly is lots of available choice at an ECMID gathering for you. But this humanity side of it, the, the, the networking side of it, apart from technology, John, just from a sheer people perspective, 
This is now the biggest single gathering in its field yeah. anywhere in the, you know, across the planet. It's an amazing thing. It is. 11,500 delegates, 123 countries. Yeah. Do you find that a bit overwhelming, even with all the available networking opportunities? Yeah. It's funny you should say that. Yes, I do, actually. It is the biggest conference I've been to for many years. And, and you, you don't run into people in the way you do at smaller conferences. Um, but it's really why we're here. So the way that we are learning is changing fundamentally. Mm -hmm. If I want to learn about something new, I Google it. I don't go to a textbook. If a patient wants to learn about their condition, chances are they'll use the, the Wi-Fi first. in the hospital yeah. Yeah. And, they'll, and they'll Google it. And I think we need to recognize that in the way that we learn as well. So perhaps conferences are less about learning and more about meeting people actually in the flesh. And certainly a wealth of choice to do that. Have you had a chance even to walk around the exhibition area as well? Yes, TV? yes, we um, we came to the exhibition on Monday and then yesterday. I mean, it's, um, it's a very large exhibition, N not a huge amount for infection prevention and control practitioners, much more science-based in terms of diagnostics and, and, lots of people and to treatment meet all and over lots of again. people to meet uh, again, but um, it's, it's an opportunity to actually meet people and look at what um, they can actually bring to the specialty. So would you both concur that ECMID, as far as the Congress goes, is literally unmissable in your profession? Yes, I, I, I would, although, as Heather alluded to earlier, I'd like to see more focus on infection prevention and control because uh, as we come towards the end of antibiotics, and we're nearly there, yep. we need the old adage of prevention is better than cure has never been so true. So we need to focus our efforts more on prevention in the future. Um, Good point. Nice observation. Final comment from yourself? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, I think um, we have to prevent infections um, in order to enable us to um, maintain our ability to treat them. Um, so I would come again. Uh, I definitely would come again. But I'd hope that maybe someone might ask us what might uh, be interesting to have from a UK perspective in infection prevention and control from the IPS. Excellent. Good points from the both of you. Thank you for being here in the studio with us as well. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you.